good day all of you welcome to our session welcome to our channel intelligible tutorials in this today's session now i want to give the clear introduction regarding what are the problems that we are having the pictorial graphs so instead of the graphs what are the various kinds of the tools to be used to represent the graphs to represent the programming structure or the states of the program or state transition diagrams okay so normally these graphs were introduced as an abstraction of the software structure so whenever a graph is used as a model we have to trace various kinds of the things the first one is paths from one node to another node what is the link is called as the path so collection of the links that leads to path from initial node to the end node and the set of the values that will sensitize the paths we are having some set of the values to the links these will sensitize the paths the logic function which controls the flow and the processing time of the routine what is the processing time and the equations that define the domain and whether the state is particular state is reachable or not so all these things are uh, we have to identify while we are working with the graph as our model okay so normally what are the problems that we will address here so normally path whatever we consider that is from uh, just a second yes yes see here the path this is the node 1 this is the node 2 and this is the node 3 is the last three so this is the path actually this is the link 1 this is the link 2 from node 1 to node 3 we are having one kind of the path node 1 to node 3 this is the path actually this path is simple actually i have drawn here but coming in the coming to the diagram this is not at all a simple one and it is not at all a simpler to understand and easy to understand it may contain several number of the errors if any one of the link is missed here so um, or we have some more links that leads to the error okay so missing of the link leads to error and uh, there are cover more some same some links twice or we are having two or three links uh, more than one time at that that also leads to error so what is the solution without these graphs without using these graphs is there any alternate to us is there any solution to us one solution is there that is to represent the graph as a matrix we can represent that particular graph as a matrix and to use some set of the matrix operations equivalent to this path identification okay uses of this particular matrix and these methods are more whatever matrix methods that we are going to use are more methodological and mechanical and don't depend on your ability to see path they are more reliable we can't see the reliable path we can't see the standard path we will see only the path is there the link is there or not whenever the link is there we make an entry into the matrix like that so these are the problems of the pictorial graphs the good solution for this already we have seen that is nothing but the matrix okay so what are the other tools that support uh, instead of this using this uh, pictorial pictorial graphs if you build test tools whenever you are using some kind of the test tools or want to know how the test tools will work sooner or later you will be implementing or investigating analysis routines based on these methods whenever you are going to use uh, some set of the tools these matrix will help you and it's hard to build algorithms or visual graphs so the properties are graph matrices are fundamental to tool building so whenever you are going to build any kind of the tools for testing in a particular graph or in a particular path or in a particular program we have to use the methodology that is nothing but graphs and as well as the matrices instead of the graphs okay so what are the basic algorithms for this uh, that we will use the basic toolkit what it contains is number one the matrix multiplication which is used to get the path expression from every node to every other node so matrix multiplication it gives the path expression from each and every node to each and every other node in the matrix this is one of the toolkit the first toolkit and the second one is a partitioning algorithm for converting graphs with loops into loop free graphs or equivalence classes 
the partition algorithm that is going to be used for converting graphs with loops loop free graphs are equivalent classes okay whenever we are having loops in the graphs graphs we will use the partitioning algorithm a collapsing process which gets the path expression from any node to any other node we will we will implement some kind of the collapse process collapsing process to get the path expression to dilute the path expression to um, to make simpler the pa complex path expression into um, easy complex easy uh, path expression from any node to any node we use this collapsing process okay matrix of a graph how can we build the matrix of a graph normally a graph matrix is a square array with one row and one column for every node in the graph so it may be a 2 by 2 it may be a 4 by 4 it may be n to n matrix each row column combination corresponds to a relation between the node correspond to the row row and the node corresponding to the column so row column combination if at all any link is there in between the row column node to node combination there we will make an entry of one each row column combination corresponds to a relation between the node corresponding to the row and the node corresponding to the column for example it, uh, it could be as simple as the link name if there is a link between two nodes we can enter the name of the link if there is a link between the two nodes so some of the things that we will observe in the um, matrix of a graph the size of the matrix equals to the number of the nodes if at all we are having a four number of the nodes that is 4 by 4 matrix two number of the nodes 2 by 2 matrix and there is a place to put every possible direct connection or link between any node to any node see here any node to any node there is a particular place is there to connect from one node to the another node okay in the entry of row column intersection in the link weight of the link that connects to two nodes in the direction so this is let us suppose a matrix so 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 so whenever there is a link from one thing to the one 1 to 1 so we can enter this a whenever there is a link from a to b we can give the name of that link a to b the name of the link is b here so we entered b here like this okay okay a connection from node j node i to node j does not imply connection from node j to node i so what we understand whenever there is a connection from 1 to 2 we can say that is a see here we can say that is a connection from 1 to 2 we cannot say that there is a connection from 2 to 1 so it is a connection of 1 to 2 but is not according to the this one 2 to 1 is not the connection okay so if there are several links between two nodes then the entry is some plus sign denotes parallel links as usual multiple links are there we can use the plus symbol to use the parallel links if at all for example here we are having another link is also there from 1 to 2 so we can add plus symbol here this is a parallel link right so we can add plus symbol here understand so like this we can represent the various kinds of the matrix of a graph okay in this example let us see this is a matrix of a graph that is 1 3 4 2 so whenever there is an entry from 1 or 2 it's not there 2 1 also it's not there okay so whenever there is an entry to 1 to 4 is there 1 to 3 is there and as well as 4 to 2 4 3 4 3 to 1 like that uh, 1 to 3 the entries are like that so we made an entry into this particular graphics sorry in this particular matrix okay here also from a b one to two b is there the link is there whenever the link is there we can make an entry into that particular matrix okay and simple weight what is a simple weight a simplest weight that we can use is to note that there is not a connection there is one means what there is a connection zero means what there is no connection we have to follow some arithmetic rules here okay so whenever there is a link is there simply that link can be denoted as one but whenever a link is not there we can denote as zero okay what are the arithmetic rules 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 1 into 1 is equal to 
1 plus 0 equal to 1, 1 into 0 equal to 0, 0 plus 0 equal to 0, 0 into 0 equal to 0. So whenever we define this kind of the matrix, such kind of the matrix is called as what? Connection matrix. Connection matrix must follow all these rules. So whenever there is a link is there, we make an entry of 1. Whenever there is no link, we make an entry of 0. Okay, so what is this connection matrix now? Connection matrix, how can we obtain this? It is updating, obtaining by each entry of 1. If there is a link and 0, if there is no link as we have discussed in the previous slide. Okay, so in the graph, if there is a link from one node to another node, we make an entry of 1 or else we make an entry of 0. Okay, so as usual, we don't write down 0 entries to reduce the cluster clutter. So each row of the matrix denotes the outlinks of the node corresponding to the node. Each column denotes the inlink corresponding to that node. So totally what this connection matrix represent? Each row of the matrix represent what? Outlinks. Okay. And each column represents the inlinks. So what are inlinks and out what are outlinks? This is the outlink. The going link is called as the outlink. And the link that is coming to the node is called as in link. So in link denotes the each column link denotes the in link and row represents the outlinks. Okay. So again some more things we have to see relevant this particular connection matrix. A branch is a node which with more than one non-zero entry in its row. A junction is a node with more than one one non-zero entry in its column. A self-loop is an entry along the diagonal. So how these entries made? So branch is a node with more than one non-zero entry. Junction with more than one non-zero entry in the column. Branch means non-zero entry in the row. Um, blindly we have to remember junction means non-zero entry in the column. So self-loop is an entry in the diagonal. Okay. So here based on, based on this we can calculate one kind of the uh, measurement that is called as what cyclomatic complexity. So what is the cyclomatic complexity? It obtained by subtracting one from the total number of the entries in each row um, and ignoring rows with no entries which obtain the equal number of the um, decisions for each row. Okay. So adding these uh, values and then adding 1 to the sum yields the graph cyclomatic value. Adding these values and adding 1 to the sum yields the cyclomatic complexity. Okay. Obtaining it is nothing but the subtracting one total number of the entries from the existing uh, in each row is and ignoring rows with no entries and obtain the equivalent number of the decision for each row. Okay. So what it is now we see here See, look at this particular diagram. One, one and here also one, two, two minus one. That is one is the cyclomatic complexity. Okay, here one comma one, one plus one, two. That is nothing but the cyclomatic complexity. Okay, so like this the cyclomatic. One more uh, uh, formula is also there for cyclomatic complexity. Cyclomatic complexity. So that is uh, we see later. Okay. So this is the cyclomatic complexity for this uh, small graph uh, for the connection matrix in the um, state transition testing that we will see uh, the importance of the matrix of the graph and what are the uh, drawbacks of the pictorial graph, what are the other things that we use instead of pictorial graphs and all these things we have discussed till now. In my coming video, we are going to discuss about the relations like uh, transitive relations, reflexive, symmetric, uh, asymmetric, equivalence and all these things that we are going to describe in my coming video. Okay. So if at all anybody, please didn't subscribe my channel. Please subscribe my channel, Intelligible Tutorials. Please watch and share all my videos. Thank you. Thank you one and all.